hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Ina so in today's video we'll be looking at some of the commands we can use to monitor and manage processes in Linux now I'm, I'm logged into an Ubuntu machine and the commands I'm gonna be showing here should apply to most of the Linux uh, distros now when when it comes to processes there's two main kinds of processes in, in Linux we have those that start up automatically when you boot up a machine and then we have those that are started from the shell the ones that are started from the shell are also called as jobs so i'll start with an example of a job here rbdd if was slash dev zero to dev slash now what this basically is doing is is just uh, copying nothing zero which means nothing to now which is nowhere and once we uh, run that command you see that the shell is now tied up and we can't really do much one thing you can do is to another command you can you can use to temporarily halt or stop this job is a control z so if I press Control Z on my keyboard, it stopped the process. However, this is only temporary because it didn't kill it. In order for us to see what jobs are running, we can do run the command jobs. And as you can see, the job it says it stopped. Another command you can use is background. This, this sends a job to the background. It added this um, to the command, and that says that it's been put to the background. Again, we'll do jobs, and again, here, that command is still, the process is still running. Now, if we wanted to kill the job, what we can do is we can bring it to the foreground, and the command for doing that is FG. Again, now the shell is tied up. Now I can kill the process or end it by doing a Control Z, and this should have killed it. If I do jobs now, there shouldn't be anything running. Now, when it comes to um, seeing what processor processes are running like i said there's jobs and then there's those that are started when you put up the machine or demons you can use a command called ps fax let's pipe it to less and this is going to show you in a uh, tree format or parent child format another another uh, command we can use is ps tree it shows us pretty much the same thing. Then you have like parents and a child relationship as far as the, uh, the different processes are concerned. Now, if you wanted to monitor processes, uh, if you wanted to kind of manage or kill processes, there's another tool that you can use. The command is top. There's top and then there's PSAUX. So if you use PSAUX, it shows you the, again, different running processes. Let's say we wanted to see the column headings. You can type it to less and here you have the user user for that particular job the process id or pid the percentage of cpu uh, being used by the job memory information for the different jobs i can press q to quit and then we'll see the top command now the top command also has similar column headings you have the user that started the job here process id or pid the priority for that job, the nice value, whereby the, the smaller the value, the higher the priority. So we can kind of manage or manipulate the, the priority by changing the nice value. The value is between minus 19 to uh, positive 19. So if you change, you wanted to change the priority of this one, you can put, let's say, minus 5, and that should uh, uh, decrease the value of uh, the priority to 15, which will move it down. Then we have percentage of CPU being used, the memory uh, for that particular job. In this case, it's the genome sh uh, shell. And here you have the top command also. And this is their process IDs. Okay, at the top here, you have, again, pretty much uh, similar information, CPU, memory, swap, and load average. So the load average is going to depend on how, how much resources are being pulled or being used by uh, by the processes. Uh, let's do an example of a process that's going to put a, a big load on the system by running a command here. Let's run a script. I'll say while true, do 
true. Uh, done. And then we send it to background. This gives us the process ID here. We can also check the process ID by doing jobs dash L. Actually, it's jobs dash L. So the jobs dash L here, it's going to show us the running processes that are running and the process ID. So this is the same as what we got here, 2735. If we go back and run the top command again, this should start increasing. The reason being that this is kind of this script is going to run, keep running. It's like a loop and it's going to keep asking for more resources. That's why the load average is going to keep going up and the CPU value is also going to go up. Now see it's 100%. So depending on the number of CPUs you have, the load average could go to one. If you have one CPU, if you have two CPUs, it will go up to a maximum of two and, all, and so on. The next thing you can do while you're here, you can, you can kill processes. Uh, let's say you you wanted to kill this process right here. You can just, while you're here, you can type the K on your keyboard. And by default, it's gonna ask you to send a kill signal to kill the default, which is, the default is gonna be the topmost, 2735. And that is the process you kill if you send a signal. So there's many signals, uh, there's uh, quite several signals that can be sent. The two main ones will be, f the are most likely to be used to kill a process is 15 and nine. So nine is not a nice way to terminate or kill a process because it, it doesn't do a cleanup, but 50, 15 does do a cleanup. Now let's say if you wanted to terminate this one top, we'll have to put, we'll have to put this, uh, the process ID 2753. So we'll go back and see the uh, control Z, uh, Z or Q and do jobs dash L. And this one is still running. So we'll try and see if we can kill it, 2735. So it should be the default one. So we'll do K, we'll press enter, and then we'll press 15. And it should have been killed. It's not showing anymore. We'll do Q, apparel and this, sh this should have been uh, removed. So this that process is no longer showing. Now, the last thing I'll show is how to change the priority values by re or by changing the nice value. We'll uh, go ahead and go to top again. And let's say you wanted to change the priority of the top command. It's got a 20. If I put a minus five, it should reduce it to 15. And we'll see what that does. So in order for us to do that, you press R and then it's gonna, the default one is gonna be again, the topmost one, genome shell. We can go with that, press enter and then enter a value, let's say minus five. So it, it's denying us permission. So you have to be root in order to do it. So let's try sudo top and see if this is gonna allow us to make that change. So type R and then we will change this. So it's pointing to the uh, this value right here. Let's use 2764 for top, 2764. Then it's asking for the value. Let's do minus five. And then let's look for top here. And as you can see, we have re-niced or changed the nice val value to minus five and priority has dropped to uh, 15. Okay, so that's that's uh, how you manage or monitor your processes using the top command. So that's it for this video. I hope this information has been useful. I'll see you again in my next video. Thanks, bye.